Forgot to team back with another Alison Borderland or a few episodes six of season one and we kick off our last episode end it with Big Hatter, Hater, whatever way you want to pronounce his name. He has to head off to extend his visa. The boss man is leaving the building. Ain't he big man? Yeah, normally you need a visa to go to a beach normally, like on holiday, but it's kinda of weird. It's ironic that this guy needs to leave the beach to extend a visa. Uh yeah, kinda of weird. But anyway. He, he goes off to play a game, drunk, kind of excited, you know, he, he seems to be, like, have this aura of, like, bulletproof personality, he feels like he's invincible, but it turns out he's not, he's not bulletproof. He gets brought back, Deed. He, he gets brought back by his henchman to the beach, Deed, and um, state, it was stated that he was shot in the chest while participating in the game. So we don't know if he was shot by another participant. We don't know if there was like guns or something involved in the game. But Hater is dead. He's lying on a table. He's definitely not sleeping. He's dead. He's gone. And I uh, kind of got it at this stage because I think he was probably the best thing to come out of episode 5. Uh, yeah, I feel like he was the best guy a part of this beach group that yeah, we hadn't known. Yeah, I mean, to me, yeah, he was probably my favourite character. Uh, it, doesn't take, it doesn't need to take a rocket scientist to know what's happened here. The military corp, whatever the fucking want to call them, they've wiped them out. It's plain as day. Good night. The number two guy wants to basically take the number one spot. He says that's how things work around here. When something happens to number one, number, number two, two steps... Well, that's how it should work, right? But seeing you're a wee specky nerdy bastard... But Aguni isn't really... For that. For that, and his... Mercenary crew, which is some guy that looks like a woman and some fake show bastard who's look out looks like non binary, non gender, alien like, uh, basically threaten all the executives into raising their hand and voting for Aguni to be voted as a new number one. Uh, even Arisu and uh, Chai, Chai, Chai Siva, another guy that looks like a. a you know woman. what? No, 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 doesn't get, no, I don't get it, but I see us a Guni guy. Why was it as if Hater has, like, such, like, a fucking hangover him? Like, when he confronted him last episode, but yet, here, he's willing to go against everyone in the fucking executive thing? Well, they're childhood friends. Oh, well, fuck the childhood friend shit. You should just... What are you... Oh, the childhood friends, I'll just shoot you during your game, buddy. Well, we don't know that's what happened. That's what's happened, man. I'm telling you. That's a prediction. That's what Big Stevie's predicting. And that's, that's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. Meanwhile, the person on the thumbnail whose name is, uh... Poundland Ada Wong. His name is completely... She's, like, doing, like, a biopsy or an autopsy on the autopsy guy. Autopsy, and Pulls she's the bullet, inspecting she's the bullet. Now, I don't know, can she tell if the bullet's from their, I don't know, ammunition? Is it their bullet? We don't know. Or do they have a right, stockpile of their own bullets? What's the set is their bullets? What the fuck's she gonna do? It's not like she can present this evidence to Specky number two, and he's gonna be like... Oh, you know what? That means I'm going to grow a set and take the military corps on. You know what I mean? He's not going to do that. He's pish. Yeah, so at this stage, we have a new leader in town, and, and straight away you can tell that Aguni is definitely... Not that Hatter, like... I mean, let's be real, Hatter, like, there was rules in place, and he basically says when you first meet him that if you if you don't follow these rules, we'll kill you. But he, he seemed more... He did seem a bit more lenient and... As if he was allowing Chilled everyone it. to party and chill, and he seemed more reasonable. The, the Aguni seems to be more of a dictator. Uh, but I don't think I know. I don't think the the beach, the island, will be as fun with um with Aguni in Aye, charge. With Aguni in charge, guys. But basically, it's also revealed that because he is now the leader of Aguni, he gets Heater's full deck of cards that's sealed in this envelope, and then it's got this mad. Shit, print it on it. And then basically, we see the guy who also... We talked about a Goonies right-hand man looking like a woman. This guy here, um, I don't know if he's called Chisawa or Kuni, right? But whatever. The guy with the blonde hair, the guy right in the picture right now, him. I don't know if that's a man or a woman. I could, it's a dude. I don't know, but mate, it looks like a woman. Well, it could be. It sounds like a dude, dude, but it looks like a woman. Right, so we'll leave it at that. But they basically come up with this plan to steal the hangs. And then they basically got... They want to steal all the cards Aye, from but... Aguni. And then we've got our main man, though. Our main character in this crocker shite. Even though Aguni's the only guy that knows where the cards are. Arisu. Ch Ch Chisiwa seems to think that he can guess 
the combination of the the the, the part the combination of the safe by basically reading Aguni's uh, facial expressions like, when he opens the new envelope. That we're, we're led to believe though that Ar- Aruti is like such a smart kid and he's this fucking mastermind, but yet for numerous times in like six episodes, he's been made to look like a fucking brain dead bastard. There, he just fucking follows this path stupidly. Oh, we'll just steal the card sure from these guys, even though realistically, what the fuck was it going to get you? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, when you think about it, would it really be that easy? Surely if these cards are that important, if these cards get you to the back to, like, you know, normality, would there not be someone guarding these cards at all times? Exactly. But anyway, yes. But he believes in Chasiwa's plan. It turns out he's been double-crossed, though, because the combination lock is wrong. And when he turns around, Chasiwa's there with Aguni and all the other henchmen. Uh, and he gets battered. then proceeds to get absolutely battered, tied up to a chair... And, uh, but it turns out that I think Chisiwa isn't actually on, he isn't in an alliance with Aguni, but he was using Arisu to actually learn the true identity, to, to learn to the lure true it. location of the cards, and he... Is it the deer paint? Yeah, so he Sorry. essentially kind of finds out that it is behind the painting because he, he noticed Aguni looking over towards that when they did catch Arisu. Um, Arisu then gets beaten up and tied up. Aye, and then we also get what's that woman called? Like, uh, you, Yugagi? Usagi? Her? Aye. Aye, the, the, the guy that looks like a man or a woman starts licking her. She's about to go all Mason Greenwood on her ass, and uh, but then she manages to escape, and this bell goes, this alarm goes, and it turns out there's a new game starting. And the beach is the one that's gonna be the arena. Yep, Chisiva tries to leave the beach but the, the, but the, there's like the whole side the, the sensor things are up so he throws leave. something like the, the test which I thought was pretty and it turns out that yeah you, you're pretty much stuck here and it turns out that the game is for the ten of hearts and it is titled witch hunt, hunt. And, and this is the card that they need so essentially, so essentially this is the hardest game there is essentially this is the hardest game there is and essentially once they get this card someone should be able to return back to their usual see, this, life. Is what, this is what I think is intriguing. It's like... Or at least that's what Hater was telling us. We actually don't know if that's the case or not. But see, that's, that's what I don't get, right? You'd think, well, the leader will go home. But why would a Goonie want... I'm not saying what his past life was Pish, but if he's the leader of this community, but I guess you wouldn't want the whole fucking I have to fight for my fees of Pish and have the threat of death every three seconds. Uh, so. so that's quite Pish, guys. But that's basically where this episode ends. We're a bit of a cliffhanger. What's going to happen to Arutsi? Is he going to get to his phone in time and log into the game? Who knows? Who's going to die? I mean, it, the game sounds like they have to find a witch and then that's it. But if they don't find them, then does like everyone in part of the game die? Ten of hearts. I've got a feeling there could be a, a shitload of casualties in the next couple of episodes. It's just a deadly game. Uh, I mean, this episode was it was all right. I mean, hater dies. You've got the whole electing the new leader, which I thought was kind of good, trying to steal the safe. I actually liked this episode. Was it better than the the last one? Probably, it, it probably was actually. You know what? I'll give I this. I feel like here got jobbed out. There was death. Was yeah, I mean, I wish he was still alive, but he's not. I'll give this one a seven point five out of ten. I'll give it a, a seven, guys. So that averages at a seven point two five, and I will be back with episode seven. We don't even know how many episodes there is in this. Uh, eight, I believe. Eight. So we have two more, guys. So that that says to me that things are about to hit the fan. But anyway, seven. Things are about to heat up. Seven point two five out of ten, brother. Till then, peace.